Hey everyone, it is so exciting to be here. Like I am literally kicking off this event and believe me, I'm gonna kick it off in style because it's gonna be kicked. So watch out. We are gonna talk about static sites and how they equal great performance and that's with Nux.js. Um, they've already like introduced me amazingly. But yes, my name is Debbie O'Brien and I'm head of learning and developer advocate at Nux.js and some other cool things I do. And like follow me um, for more information and like for checking up follow me on twitter devs underscore o'brien and yeah i'm a cloudinary media developer expert and a google developer expert and a microsoft most valuable professional and that photo is actually from the cruise that me and christine are on in the antarctica i love that photo so today we are going to get rid of the lamp we're going to get rid of the mean no more mean guys and we're gonna let the jam take over now i really really hope you like jam so what am I going to cover? So the new front end, I like to call it the new front end, Jamstack. It's what we're using these days. It's the new front end. Static versus dynamic. I'm going to teach you what is the difference between static and dynamic. I'll show you a little case study, some performance tips, and there'll be some useful links at the end of the slides. So what has changed? Well, now everything is pre-rendered at build time. So before we used to have to like, you know, get everything from a server and, you know, go and get that, that stuff, and now everything's done at build time. So at build time, we're generating, we're pre-rendering everything at the build time, and then it's all ready and useful as a static application. So basically, yeah, there's, there's no execution at request time because we already have all that information we want, and the functionality is all on the client side. So like typically, we used to have to get the back end to do all them scary stuff, you know, like form validations, and now on the front end, we can do all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of really cool. But it is all about the APIs. And it's very important to understand now we're using, we're leveraging those APIs. The back end are creating the most amazing APIs. And we have like such cool things. Without APIs, the Jamstack would be pretty boring. So with the APIs, for example, we have search functionalities. Like before, trying to implement search was complicated. Now we've got like Angolia search, amazing API. We just like, you know, get a call to that, get everything we want. Payments, we can have payments on our front end thanks to APIs such as Stripe. We can have authentication and we can have so much more. Like really the APIs, those backends are creating those really super cool, super powerful APIs. So what do we gain from going Jamstack? Going Jamstack improves our security. Like we have a smaller um, attack vector now because our front end is separated from our back end. So that's kind of like, you know, really 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 cool it improves performance and performance is key i mean we're all stuck at home using wi-fi that's probably not as good as it would have been if we had been in the office so we're now like feeling the power of you know the performance just needs to be powerful so really uh, going jamstack improves that we have a better developer experience because now as front-end people have our code in front-end environments and it's not mixed in with like all that botnet code that we don't understand or all that other code that we don't understand. So that proves like a better developer experience. And easy deployment, like we can just deploy the front-end because it's decoupled from the back-end and we just deploy it much easier because we know what's going on and we know our code. So the definition of static, are you ready? Lacking in movement, action, or change, especially in an undesirable or uninteresting way. Oops. Yeah, that's kind of not good, is it? So now, how are we going to go and tell our clients? We're going to build static sites. We are going to build sites that are lacking in movement, action, or change in an undesirable or uninteresting way. Oh, that's not going to be good, is it? Let's just talk about Taekwondo. So I am a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. And in Taekwondo, we perform patterns. And in patterns, we normally have like in a competition, we have to do our pattern. At the very end of the pattern, we have to be very static. So it'd be like this, right? We have, you know, this movement and we have to end in this movement. And if we're doing our pattern against somebody who has a longer pattern than you, or is maybe just slower than you, then you have to hold that position for quite a long time. So you're holding that static position. Now, if I was to ask you, is Taekwondo static or dynamic, you would kind of say, well, it's dynamic, isn't it, right? Well, Taekwondo can be static as well. Now, obviously, let's look at a really, really cool dynamic kick. So dynamic kick, just when you're watching this kick come true, just kind of think about how that person is going to land in a static position, right? Like, 
bang, just check that out. So there is no way she can hold that position like that until the end of the pattern, right? In the middle of that uh, competition, she has to land in a static position. That basically means that static can be dynamic and dynamic can be static, right? Let me show you another example. So here we go with a punch. We have static, dynamic, static, dynamic, static, dynamic, right? See, super easy to understand. Static goes to be dynamic, comes back to be static. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. And again, with the kick, now, normally I would be um, doing this example, you know, on a stage, but like we're live and we're virtual. So I'm not going to jump up and kick the camera because I'll probably knock it all down. Right. But basically, yes, here we go. Static, dynamic, static, dynamic. What I'm trying to say here is that static is the new dynamic. Like, seriously, this is what we have to get into our heads, because before we were saying static sites, they're boring. We think back to the 90s, how we used to build websites, and they were really boring, except for that flashing, you know, JavaScript marquee that came across the screen. Um, now we can do so much more with static sites. And basically, the static site, what it's doing is it's going to the CDN, and it's just delivering everything back to the user. Everything's already ready. It's already pre-generated. And it's now in the CDN, and we're just bringing it back to the user. And that means no servers are needed. Do you remember the day when the server lived in your office? Like, oh my god, yeah. So thank god our servers do not live in the offices, because we've like not been allowed to go to the offices. So you know that makes it kind of like complicated. We don't need a server anymore, and that makes it really cool. So basically, static is the new dynamic, and it's super powerful. And I'm going to just like, yeah, I'm going to use Taekwondo again, because I really love Taekwondo. So um, I was going to do this kick on the stage as well, but you know, I didn't have anyone to hold the boards, so I'm not going to do it. But I just wanted you to watch this. And I want you to think of the, the boards that are up there that are being held, they're the APIs. And what's happening here is that this Taekwondo person, right, watch it, look it up, oh, love it, jumping up, and it's basically getting all that data, it's building the application, it's going up to those APIs, getting everything it needs, and it's coming back down. And now you have that static generated site. So thanks to those Taekwondo people, we've got all this dynamicness going on, but it's going on just before we build that site, and then we have all that coolness, and it's basically in our CDN. And that's what I want you to think about when you think about static sites. Is Taekwondo static? Sometimes it's mainly dynamic. Static sites, are they always static? Sometimes they're mainly dynamic. Okay. So when it comes to static and dynamic sites, I mean, now we understand what static sites are. I want you to show you how easy it is to use. We basically just push and deploy. We have decoupled the front end from the back end. We don't live in the back end code anymore. So we can just push and deploy. And every pull request has its own like, staging environment. It's just like, yeah, we can just push and deploy, which is just gives us increased confidence. Staging is the same as production. And we can deploy anywhere, anytime. And normally, I would say, we can just deploy from an airplane, but we can't even get on an airplane right now. So we can deploy from our own home. And that is a good thing because imagine if we couldn't, we would have not done any work in the last two months. So you can kind of say, yeah, but you've got to deploy your static site each time that you change something. And that is true. But we have webhooks and you can um, you can use a webhook. So that when your content changes, you can just pre-render uh, pre that site again, and then just like push it to your CDN, and bang, you have that new static site with all that new content that you want. So you're going to say, that's a lot of generation with static sites. But you know, seriously, like relax, take it easy. You don't have to do any work. Remember, the Taekwondo people, they're jumping up, and they're getting all that stuff for you. They're doing all the work for you. So you don't have to do anything. Don't worry about it. It takes seconds, and then your user's going to benefit from it. So it's it's really, really, really worth doing. So let's talk about going static. Now, Nuxt is not just a static site generator. Nuxt is a progressive Vue.js framework. And what that means is that basically, you can build your application using Vue.js code as you would like a single page application, but then you basically just generate it to be a, single, uh, to be a static site. So it's not just for static sites, which means you can use Nuxt to do much more than just static site generating. And that kind of makes it really, really cool. What are the benefits of Nuxt? So for those of you that don't know about Nuxt.js, so you're writing your Vue.js code, OK, but you have file-based routing. Now, what that means is that all you have to do is put your page into the Pages folder, and it will automatically get a router JSON file created for you. Now, I created the router course for Vue. 
and I know how painful it is to maintain that router file and all the work you have to do. In Nux, you don't have to do that. It's automatically, bang, you just put the page in the pages folder and you have it done. Even we have automatically code splitting of those routes automatically done for you. What does that mean? It means the JavaScript for that page that you're not at yet, the about page, for example, is code splitted. It's put in another bundle and it's not uh, used. It's not downloaded on that home page until you actually go to that about page. So everything is code splitted, separated into bundles for you automatically without you having to do anything. Love it. Prefetching. We can prefetch all those pages like that about page because it's already in that menu. It's possible the user is going to click that page. So we prefetch it, which means it's ready to load as soon as the user um, clicks on that about button, for example, on that about link. So we prefetch all those links for you. And that is super, super performance. So really, really cool. And Nuxt has like more than 50 modules. So like you can set up a progressive web app, Google Analytics, uh, sitemap, and it takes seconds because of these modules that are already created for you. So as I already explained, uh, Nuxt can give you server-side rendering, single-page application, or static sites. Now, that's kind of really cool. Now, I've already told you that we're getting rid of those servers. So I'm not going to go much into server-side rendering. But if you've already built your Nuxt application as a server-side rendering application, because you need a search engine optimization, for example, you can easily change it to a static app. Easily, like so simply. Like basically, you would have had mode being universal for server-side rendering, right? If you're building a single-page application, you would have had mode SBA. And again, you can just quickly change that from the mode SPA to universal if you have a single page application that you want to be built using a static application. So that's all you've got to do your side. Then when you go to deploy your application, you basically have to call Nuxt generate instead of Nuxt build. Simple as that. You change that command, and now you have a static site. Like, seriously, like, isn't that just like cool? So. No excuses. You can now deploy your application to static site generators, to static site hosting, which is free. Love it being free, which is free like Netlify, GitHub Pages, etc. cetera, um, really, really easily. So you don't have to pay for those servers. It doesn't have to live on a server anymore. And it's, look how easy it is. Like, seriously, everybody just go straight away and change your applications from universal and single page applications into static. Seriously. Let me show you how really cool it is. So this is a case study we did. And this is a travel agency called Patterson.Travel, and it is built with Nuxt. Now, what we did was we built a travel agency um, with a blog, events, case studies. It's in like three languages, about 144 generated pages. Like we don't just generate one page for the blog, but like the page for each category and all the posts. And it took about 74 seconds to generate. So it's like, it didn't take that long to generate the pages, right? Now, Patterson Travel, just to give you an idea of like, the size of the application, it wasn't a large application, and it wasn't a small one. So it had five layouts, had about 32 page components, about 38 components, eight plugins, nine modules, and 21 pages of docs. So I actually had documentation inside our application using ViewPress. Yeah, you can use ViewPress in your Nuxt.js application, just in case you didn't know. So yeah, um, that's basically what our application was like. And it also had a booking engine, which meant we could search for a hotel, search for an event, book a hotel, um, add children and adults to the room, add extra such as a t-shirt for the event, check out, pay, and receive confirmation of purchase. Ah, now you're kind of looking at me saying, but you just told me you built a static app. So how can you have a booking engine that's basically getting all the data? Yeah, because we can't like you know statically generate all the data for every single possibility of every single hotel or every single combination of event and hotel and child and t-shirt, right? Hmm. So what do we do in those situations? So yes, the booking engine was a single page application. Ah, now I'm cheating you, right? No, because basically we can have a single page application inside a static site. Now that is next for you. Don't you just love that? So that's kind of cool. Now we can still deploy that single page application to our free hosting because it's acting as a fallback. We have a spa fallback in our Nuxt. So basically, in order to do that, all you've got to do is add the generate property. What the generate property does is it basically says, here I'm putting fallback true. You could put fallback um, 404.html depending on the hosting provider you're using. So with Netlify, true is what we would use. And then we just put exclude. So here I'm using like booking, which is the booking, anything with booking, booking page, booking folder, will just be excluded. It will not be generated. 
the generate will just go, oh, I'm not going to generate a you. You are not going to be a static page, which then means the fallback, the fallback will kick in and it will just make that page a single page application in the moment on the client side. You won't have search engine optimization for those pages, but you don't obviously need it for those pages, right? So, and you can use a regex expression in there, but I'm not gonna like spell it out how to do that. But yeah, like, you know, dash booking and then everything with dash booking would be like uh, excluded from your generate. So that's kind of cool. It kind of just makes you be able to do so much more with static sites, right? So how do they work? So the site's pre-rendered as I mentioned. Um, basically, remember the tech wonder person, gone up to that API, get everything it needs, come back down, and it's now got everything, and it's ready to go. And then hydration kicks in. So that's where Vue takes over your application and kind of makes it all that super cool dynamic and uh, hydrates it. And like the content stays up to date because of API calls and navigation. So what am I saying here? Well, every time you change page, it's actually calling the API. It's sending that tech wonder person up there again. It's getting all that data again. And that's just how Nuxt works, right? So it's every time I change the page, I'm calling the API. So if you were to look in your network tab, for example, every time you change the page, you would see that call to your API. So now I'm kind of like saying, you just told me you're static sites, and now you're saying you're kind of static sites, but you're kind of calling an API. Well, that's not really static, is it? What if I just want to you know, be full static? What if I don't want to call the API every time I navigate to a page? Ah, yeah, I know, it was hard, but we listened to you and we made it happen with the full static. So full static means one API call on build. That means we just call it once on the build time and then that type one person gets everything it needs from all that data and it basically stores it into a payload. And then you will just call the payload on navigation instead of the API. Now that's really cool because it means you, can, you have all that data, right? You have it all in your payload, so it's better offline support. Um, it's faster because you don't have to make those API calls anymore. So the static module is coming soon, and I mean really soon. Seriously, it's going to be released, I don't know, this week, next week, or the week after, maximum. And that's going to make our static sites even more static, yet even more dynamic. Kind of cool. So yeah, just like how it would work is it would call like everything is make put into a payloads folder. This probably might be called static or payloads. And then it will just create a folder for each one of those and put a payload.json file in there. So all that is stored inside, it's now in your CDN, it's already stored. And every time you click the page, you will call that payloads folder and you will get your page with all that data from your API. So that's very, very cool. Like I said, it's coming soon, like watch out. It's gonna be released very, very soon. And it's just, uh, it's amazing. Um, payloads are fully cacheable and they'll have like another hash and rebuild. So yeah, really, really cool. So static sites equals great performance. And thanks to Nux.js, we really can build amazing performance, amazing performance sites. So yeah, seriously, like use your um, Google Chrome Dev Tools to check that your performance is okay. And if you're using a Nux site, you'll check it and you'll probably be in green. If not, just do everything you can to try and get it up to green. Uh, do an audit regularly because things can change. Accessibility, okay, really, really important. Semantic HTML, make sure you have labels for your forms. Add area tags, add alt tags. Now you're all kind of looking at me and saying, Debbie, we know all this. This is simple, basic stuff. What are you telling us this for? Are you actually doing it though? Are you actually at the moment you're programming your website thinking about these things? Or are you going, oh, I'll fix that later. I'll just quickly build something. Seriously, accessibility first, really important. Chrome Dev Tools for accessibility, like even if you're doing like color contrast, you can actually have a great tool and you can see, it can show like this contrast color was AA. At the time it wasn't when we first released it, it was actually in red. And it will give a red tick there and it will say, oh, you need to you know, fix this. Just by changing a slight moderation of that color gray, we were able to make our page more accessible. And it's really, really, really uh, worthwhile doing that. So keep a check on that. Auto-optimize your images. I use Cloudinary. Cloudinary is amazing because you can put all your images up there and then you can use their great features like putting Q underscore auto that will give me the automatic quality that I need for that image and F underscore auto, the automatic format for that image. And what that means is that if I'm on like Chrome, for example, it's gonna give me a WebP image instead of a JPEG. And if I'm on Internet Explorer, it's gonna give me a, J a JPEG instead. So this is like done automatically for you. So this is kind of like really, really cool. Lazy load your images. So 
Lazing equals true. Coding equals lazy. That's all you need to do. Simple, just like, don't be lazy. Progressive web app. In Nuxt, we can build progressive web apps really, really easy. You install it, like install, npm install, or yarn add, Nuxt.js, PWA, and then you just put it in your modules um, into the Nuxt config. That's all you've got to do. Well, actually, no, it's really hard coming up now. You've got to add an icon.png to the static folder. That's the hardest thing you've got to do. And if you do like, like 512 pixels by 512 pixels, it will then automatically generate all those icons for like the um, iPad and the iPhone, et cetera. So yeah, simple. It will take two minutes. So everyone, if you've got a next uh, application already, at a period rate, like seriously. CSS stats, you can check your CSS all the time using CSS stats and make sure that you're not shipping too much CSS. Because remember, CSS is one of the most time consuming to load. So keep that down. I suggest using Tailwind. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but keep a check on that. Modern mode. With Nuxt, we have modern mode. What that means is that we can just add dash dash modern, dash M for short, and that will then build a client, a modern, and a service. It's going to build a modern bundle for us, which means all that code for like those cool browsers, like Chrome, for example, um, is, which don't all those extra things that other browsers, like Internet Explorer, need. Um, it will just have those smaller browser bundle for you. So that's simple. If you're using the static sites, just next generate dash dash pattern. Really cool. Code split from the start. Like seriously, we talked a little bit about code splitting of your pages. You can also code split your components. So if you're writing your component, um, you normally would import, and you're just using the arrow function here to import, and that's what code splitting does. Now this footer component is code splitted, which means because I have to scroll down to my page to see that footer, I don't need to load it up front. I don't need the, all that code and all that JavaScript to be up front. So if you start code splitting from the start, like obviously don't code split the uh, header component because you kind of need that up front, but you will know what can be code split, like a modal, a drop down, footer, et cetera. Lazy load your translations if you're using internationalization. Lazy true, simple as that, just do it. Tailwind and Purge CSS. Like this is really, really cool. Um, basically, Tailwind and Purge CSS, just use the Tailwind CSS uh, module from Nuxt, and then you've got Tailwind, and it comes with Purge CSS, so it's gonna like take away any CSS that you're not using. Tailwind is utilities CSS library, it's amazing, check it out. Webpack analyzer, we can analyze the code all the time by using dash dash analyze or dash a. So yeah, nux build dash a, and then you will get this from Webpack. And you can kind of see, we were like, oh my god, we were like, you know, sending and shipping all this code with all these, like, uh, moment, all the um, languages of the world were in there. Look at them all. Why? What are we doing? So we were able to see that from the analyzer, and then we just like, use Luxton. We got rid of all those other ones. So yeah, seriously, analyze your bundle, because Webpack gives you this really great tool. So use it, it's built in with nux with uh, build dash a. So Jamstack, do we need it? Hell yeah. Like seriously, I am taking the fight. And it is going to be a fight when you go back to the office or maybe you're still like going to be virtual and you say to your boss, you know, I'm going to build static sites from now on. Uh, when you say that, they're going to say, oh, I'm not going to be building static sites because they think static sites are boring. Tell them about Taekwondo. Just say, Debbie said it's all about Taekwondo people. They're jumping up to the API. It's super dynamic. Trust me. And just, yeah, take that fight. Seriously. And I have like, one question for you. Are you Nuxt? Nuxt is cool. I would love to see more people using it and building really, really cool applications. Um, we are Nuxt. And basically, yeah, I'm really, really excited for all the new features that are coming to Nuxt. And I want to just make the world a better place by building static sites and uh, basically jam stacking and Nuxtifying the world. So go out there, build static sites, uh, use Jamstack, build sites with Nuxt, and have amazing fun. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. This has been great to be here. Don't forget, you need to donate. So don't forget to donate, uh, especially if you like the talk. Um, donate even more. Thank you very much, and pow!